North America and we're here at um, Willow Springs in California in the new 911 GTS. Yes. So 911, like 50 years of uh, fabulous cars and always evolving. Right, right. That's the key to um, keep the heritage, make the car better and better in terms of performance, in terms of everyday usability and uh, create the overall package in every situation, you know, every driving situation. Okay, let's go on uh, for a ride here now. Uh, yeah, safety first. So, tell us a little bit about, like, the, as we were saying, 9-11, 50 years of history. There are, like, many variants of this car. And why have a no, I mean, like, what, what, what what's the need? Not the need, I mean, why, why is the, the reason for having this? Other variant. Well, the GTS is our middle ground, if you want to call it that. It's the next step beyond the regular Carrera and Carrera S, um, but retains their everyday usability without going to the all-out raw performance that the 911 GT3 offers. So the key was to increase the agility, give you an even better handling car, um, give you more performance, and retain the everyday street ability of the regular Carrera S because you're not making any sacrifices in terms of comfort yeah. or everyday usability with the GTS, but you are getting more performance. So uh, as we can see in the interior, the interior is as beautiful as all the other uh, Porsches. I mean, a Cantera uh, um, leather here on the steering wheel, like all the streamings, like it's, it's yes. still a luxury car, but like performance-wise, it's, performance. it's, it's pretty good. Uh, yes, Alcantara is, um, is our performance upholstery, if you will. Um, it's it hugs you. You don't slide around, and it's also lighter than leather. Oh, really? So I didn't know that. Yes. So oh. there's even a small but uh, performance gain from that. It's small, but it's there. So uh, like in every other detail in, in Porsche, every single thing has like a fun function a and form, right? A purpose. It's um, obviously we love to make the car look good, but we're always looking for functionality. That design element can make the car perform better, make it more efficient in any possible way. We do strive to achieve that. And um, what about, let's talk about the specific uh, engineering about the car, the engine, the suspension. What, what's different from the regular 911? The obvious uh, increase in power is the 30 horsepower upgrade. Uh, gain. So this one has this one has 430 horsepower, as opposed to 400 in the regular RS. That was gained by the uh, intake system. Variable, so it channels the air through uh, different pipes. Yeah. The, the uh, flaps vary the length, so depending on whether you want to produce more torque or have the engine breathe more freely in the higher RPM range, it adjusts for that. Uh, along with that comes uh, different camshafts, different valve springs, and uh, the sport exhaust system, which actually has a different tune than the sport exhaust system available for the regular Carrera S. The flaps open at 31. Is that proprietary so, technology from a Porsche? Is like something that was uh, invented by Porsche and it's like exclusive to it? Uh, well, a lot of manufacturers use flaps uh, and exhaust. To no, not the exhaust and the um, intake. So the, uh, the intake, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's a system that uh, our engineers developed specifically for this engine to improve the breathing and uh, retain the torque of the regular Carrera S because the regular Carrera S has the same 3.8 liter engine uh, a lot of torque, um, but to improve the power, performance, and free revving capability in the higher RPM range. Yeah. So you're not usually when you um, fine tune a performance engine to give it more power in the higher RPM range, you're sacrificing some torque. Okay, and this yeah. and this system allows us to retain the torque of the regular engine, so you still have this like we're doing right now, accelerating from low RPMs, get up and go there. Um, but then when you grab the engine like that, there's more power in it. Absolutely. And so 400, best of, best of, best of everything. Yeah, and I, I'm at the other point always with Porsche is that uh, 430 horsepower, I mean now like Dodge is, has a car like 707 horsepower. Right. You don't have to have that much power when the engineering is that done with that precision to, to extract every single piece of, uh, of power exactly. of the engine, right? I mean, if, um, you, and that's what we've been about for, for many years. Is, um, horsepower on a piece of paper doesn't do you any good <laughs> if you can put it down onto the road. Yeah. And um, we offer the car with a rear wheel drive and a four wheel drive as we do many of our other Carrera variants. Um, the rear wheel drive car already, due to the fact that the engine is obviously at the back, has great traction. And then if you're a customer that's looking to buy a car to use in winter conditions, um, you want the maximum amount of safety and range. 
drivetrain layouts allow us to get um, the power to the ground very well. In, in actuality, um, both versions with the PDK, for example, the 911 Carrera GTS Coupe and the 911 Carrera 4 GTS Coupe go from 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. So that shows you how good the traction how, how, of the rear wheel drive yeah. are and how well calibrated the PDK launch control is. That shows you how, how it brings all the power and how it really puts in all the power way. in an efficient uh, way, maximizing performance. Yeah. The other thing is PDK. I mean, uh, you still offer manual tra transmission cars, but like nothing can beat a PDK. Huh? Right. It, so we do still offer the manual on these cars. Uh, we've actually improved uh, the geometry of the shift linkage for a even more precise, crisp throw with your shifting gears. Even more, because it was like when, when it came out. When was it? Like five, six years ago? The, uh, the PDK. Current, current, the PDK. Yes. Yeah. yes. I mean, that was. I mean, the most wheel was perfection. So yes. if you're making perfect even better right that's what but, you're saying right but so you've you've um you've been able to sample the manual transmission yeah, this morning which is great and, too i think you can attest to the fact that it feels it feels great you can feel the optimized geometry that our engineers work very 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 hard on um but yeah pdk the software strategy if you have it in sport plus and you're on the track you don't need the paddles the system is so intuitive in terms of um, registering cornering, registering braking, registering acceleration, it down and up shifts exactly when you want it to. And you can keep both hands on the when wheel. When the car needs it more than when you need to. I mean, like more than, than when you want to. Because that's like the, the, the computer analyzing every millisecond of uh, every, what it's happening. Every angle right? of pitch and every degree of exertion that you're putting on the car with, with the throttle of the brakes, it analyzes that to give you the best possible shift pattern so that you can keep both hands on the wheel and maximize the handling performance. Yeah, the most but, out of the car. Yeah, but still, the, the manual transmission, it's fun. I mean, and for some people, I think there's always going to be, hopefully, right? Like some people who are going to still enjoy doing that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact of the matter is that the large majority of our customers does opt for the PDK due to its increased performance and efficiency. And it's also more comfortable because these cars, as you've seen, are very, very drivable on road. It's not a stiff performance car that's only for no, on the track. Yeah. You can drive to work in this car. You can drive on a road trip in this car. And um, it's just nicer when you're sitting in traffic or you're just cruising around to have that PDK. Yes, we do still offer the manual, um, but PDK is, is the way of the future. And also all the other technology like stop and go, like when the engine the start stop, start yes. stop. I'm sorry, and uh, the coasting function. The seventh gear acts as an overdrive in both transmissions to bring the revs down, increase fuel consumption. The car is very, very efficient when you're just cruising down the road, and that's that's another um, of our strong suits. That's all part of our Porsche intelligent performance strategy that um, we're trying to prove with every car that efficiency and performance are not mutually exclusive but go hand in hand. When you make a car more efficient, you can actually make it faster at the same yeah. time and vice versa. So yeah, we're, we, we are seeing that even in Formula One. Like now they have pretty much hybrid car, very power train, right? System. Exactly. I mean, it's, exactly. it's more or less like what I'm saying. This is not a hybrid, of course, but like right. we're just saying like efficient can be still very fun. Right, right. And uh, yeah, I think the GTS is, is a perfect example of a huge spread that's possible in the 911 having so many different characters if you want to call it that in one car yeah and the gts uh let's say philosophy engineering it's, it's spread into other models in Porsche, right yes um we have the panamera gts obviously um we have uh, introduced the boxster and cayman gts this year applying that same principle of tighter suspension a little bit more power unique styling cues and this is now spread to the 911. Uh, we offer four variants of the GTS and the 911. Uh, two coupes and two cabriolets with two and four wheel drive. And uh, at the LA Auto Show, we've just released the press kit. Um, we'll be showing the Cayenne GTS. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the value of this car. Because, I mean, if you go up onto the 911 Turbo S, you're talking about like a couple hundred thousand dollars, right? Yeah, that car starts at around $180,000, yeah. the Turbo S. Um, our customers uh, see the value in that car because that no, Turbo yeah, I'm not saying it's not worth it, I'm just saying it's what it is. It, it, yeah, it's expensive, but it happens to be our, yeah. our best-selling model. Um, 
which tells you a lot about how much the, 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 how the appreciation that people have for that. Exactly. Is it a lot of money? Yes, but uh, at the end it's of the relative. day, the people, uh, our customers, uh, they see the value in the fact that it's an all-wheel drive, streetable, high-performance car with enough comfort to go on a 1,000-mile road trip. So it, it encompasses so many good traits beyond that of just a sports car that they're willing um, to pay that price, which we think actually, given the spread of the car, is still reasonable. Yeah. Um, the GTS is uh, traditionally not just a higher-performance car uh, with a completely retained usable, everyday usability that's characteristic of a Porsche, but it's also a value proposition because this car has uh, several options, the Sport Chrono package, uh, center lock wheels, which you cannot get on the regular Carrera S. Okay. They're usually exclusive to the GT3s and turbos. Um, the performance kit with the Sport exhaust uh, power kit. So when you put all of these options in a regular Carrera S, uh, it's actually more expensive than the GTS. So the GTS is a value proposition for customers that are looking to get into a higher end Carrera S or Carrera 4S. Um, and over the years we've discovered that several of these options they're going to order anyways. So to increase the performance of the car, we put those into it. Make it is almost standard, like, right. like what, what, right. what really people want. Right. Uh, so um, we know that in Europe a lot of people order their cars, or most of people order their cars, like for a process that takes a couple of months. Is, is that you think that's going to be the case, or because you're packaging so many things in the new car, people are going to be able to get them almost like in stock from from the dealerships? Well, you certainly. Um, a stock car isn't a bad choice because, again, a lot of the options yeah. that are Already uh, there. available on the other cars are standard here. Having said that, we do have special GTS colors like the Carmine Red, and um, I think when people are getting into a car like this, they're willing to wait some extra time to get exactly the car they want. It's, it's all about uh, fine-tuning the car in terms of color, in terms of options, to get the customer exact experience that he wants to have individually with this car and I think our customers are very appreciative of the options that we do offer and are willing to wait that extra time once they've configured the car. And the other thing like it happens with uh, all, all Porsches I mean cars retain their body really well so that's why people yes. want to like create something even more special right? right. For, yes. For them. Yes they want something unique. Um, they don't, don't just go in and point at a car they're really interested in the availability of options and shaping the car to suit their personal needs, their personal driving style, their personal everyday driving. Yeah. And uh, this is what we offer the huge spread of options that we do. And this is also why the customers take time in ordering and are willing to wait a certain amount of time um, until their exact unique car gets there. Well, I mean, I, I've enjoyed it a lot, uh, the, the, well, both the manual and uh, the PDK. The PDK I haven't driven in the truck, that's where we're going right now. And even though we can open it, like, well, moving up to like up to 30 miles an hour, we'll do it standing here at the entrance of Willow Springs. And uh, so we're gonna go there and like now we enjoy the regular driving part of it. So now let's go 